Welcome back to the Garden with Joy and Holly radio show. Tree diaper. We talked about watering situations earlier. Tree diaper takes all the work out of it for you. Tree diaper is a revolutionary watering system that slowly releases water around the base of any tree or plant as the soil dries. The tree diaper is filled with water from rain or when you water and slowly releases water over three weeks. No more overwatering or underwatering with the tree diaper. Every time it rains, tree diaper recharges. No pipes, hoses, or electricity needed. Water your plants and trees, whether you're by, down by the house, down the road, or in the back 40. Also works under mulch. Whether you're a first-time gardener or advanced, tree diaper will improve the way you water your plants. Made in the USA. You can find all the sizes they have available at tree diaper. Dot com. That's treediaper.com. Don't wait until your plants are dead to get the tree diaper. If you are interested in how it operates, go to our parent website, the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener.com. Search engine uh, at the upper right corner and type in tree diaper, and you will see several videos in which we've done. It works better than what we described. That, that's just really the real, reality of it, Holly. Right. So July is um, Disability Pride Month, which is celebrating its. Uh, it, it, uh, came about um, after the American Disabilities Act was passed in July of 1990. And this is to prohibit discrimination against people with disabilities. And so in light of that, we want to talk about gardening, gardening for all abilities, okay. for all, all people. Um, so if you are a fit and abled body person, you may not struggle with anything in regards to gardening or any sort of physical movement, but many people, especially either as we get older or just because of how our bodies are, we may have to work on ourselves to or work on ways to find um, systems or tools or whatever to make gardening enjoyable for us and within our our physical abilities. So the desire is there, but the what would you classify it? The mobility may not be. There? Yeah, mobility or just not capability, be, capability, okay. whatever. We're going to focus on not the less, but the more. Okay. So, for example, um, there's a, a lot of accessibility tools that you can get, whether there be ergonomic shaped tools, um, longer tools if you're shorter. You, I know, Joe, you have this mindset oh, a short person wants a short tool. No, a short person wants a longer tool because we're short and we need that extra reach. Okay. So that's that's absolutely. But incorrect. you look so nice with a little short shovel. You're only you're only what five foot. And I'm five one. Five one and a quarter yeah. and three eighths of an inch or whatever it is. Yeah. Yeah. So that's one thing is thinking about how can I make this work for me, and that's something like ergonomic tools. And that will or, work for the those who don't have the challenges as well. That's what these companies have worked towards. Right. For both. Yeah. For, for all one, people. Yeah. One to basically like you know, protect your back or whatever in an ergonomic way, but also if if you do need the additional the additional help. Okay. Um another thing is there's different stools. Um there's like kneeling stools, kneeling pads, there's uh things on wheels mm-hmm. for weeding. Um there's all sorts of, you know, things you can look up to purchase to help whatever you need, whether it be a nice sturdy uh multi use kneeling stool or something on wheels or just um just a, a just bucket. a regular yeah a bucket. a bucket um there's some times where i've sat on a five gallon bucket i have a hiking stool uh-huh. <laughs> there is <laughs> there is such a thing folks it's, i mean it's, it's a hiking it's that's what it's yeah. category yeah and because i like to hike but sometimes you know you need to take a little break and so you bust out your hiking stool and you sit on the trail you and take a seat uh-huh. for a few minutes or whatever you need or you just want to have some water or a snack or whatever. It's literally like not marketed as a hiking stool. It's just a, a small lightweight stool that is portable and, and I can put it on my backpack. But it would work in the garden. However, if you're in soft soil, it may not have the foundation. The the, the, the legs may yeah. go through the soft soil. and you. So maybe like a five-gallon bucket right. would be a better. Something that has a, a larger foundation on it that right. has more surface area so it doesn't sink in. Right. Yeah. Um, so then also another thing is you want to be aware of yourself, right? So maybe you want to take more breaks, spend more time in the shade, um, make sure you're drinking plenty of water, make sure, um, you know, you have snacks, whatever. There's many people who get low blood sugar or, um, uh, you know, whatever, whatever occurs. So making sure that you are 
taking care of yourself and being aware. And if the heat does affect you, then don't, you know, don't garden during the hottest parts of the day between about 1 and 3 p.m. It's okay to leave some weeds. There's an old saying in Europe. Uh, well, one of the allotment gardeners says it. Do a little, but do it often. Right. And that's another thing is that, um, yeah, do a little, do it often. And, you know, be mindful. Maybe maybe you're a morning person. You can go out in the garden in the morning before that sun starts to to heat up the day. For most of our gardens, it's similar to on a farm. You're never going to get everything done that you need done. You want to prioritize and figure out what has to get done. Once those have tos get done, then you can go, well, what needs to get done? Right. Definitely. Um, another thing is, is you want to consider stretching. Stretching helps all of us. It doesn't matter what your abilities are. It just helps you know, keep your, your joints and your body feeling nice and loose and good. So, um, what kind of you can do, stretches would you recommend? Like forward folds. You can do any combination of what's called a cat cow. And a lot of these you can do seated. So if you want to, you know, you can find on YouTube seated stretches, things like that. If maybe doing standing stretches is, uh, feels a little bit too much for you. Um, you can do, you know, kind of do some arm stretches, leg stretches. You can look up stretches for gardeners, seated stretches. Seated stretches for gardeners, things like that. And you can find all sorts of videos. And again, the point of stretching before you would go and do these activities is what what is the main purpose of, of such a thing? Well, when you stretch, it helps warm up your muscles. Okay. But also after, then it helps. Um, it's kind of like a cool down. I'm not uh, I'm not a fitness professional well, what, by any means. Isn't it more, doesn't it also help with blood flow? And yeah. also that would help with thinking coherently or thinking cl- more clearer? Yeah, it can help with blood flow. Okay. Mm-hmm. I know, like, for example, you know, working a desk job, if I get up and stretch, it definitely, like, kind of refreshes me. Mm-hmm. So, And then you thing. dread going back. <laughs> um, so another thing is, is that you can grow what you can and then use other resources like farmer's markets. So, for example, maybe you have... You have uh, you want to grow in some containers, but you don't have a lot of help, and those containers could be heavy, so you just kind of keep them one place and grow a few tomatoes and what you really enjoy. Then you can get the rest of your seasonal produce from farmers markets, and that's another way to to get that if you can't um, if you don't feel that you can successfully grow on your own. How can one find a local farmers market in their particular uh, area? You can just go to your favorite search engine and type in farmer's market and your zip code. Otherwise, you can call your local city hall okay. or town hall, whatever, and they can direct you uh-huh. or county. Yeah. And and for large municipalities, if you're new to the farmer market uh, environment, large uh, small towns will have like one once a week or once every other week. Large municipalities... Uh, cities will have multiple ones, particularly maybe some day a day they'll have two or three or throughout the week they might have like different areas of that city. They'll have a different one every day. Right. Yeah. So there's there's that option as well. And, um, and, and they're not sponsored here, but there are door delivery produce companies that you can order for a fraction of what you would buy at the grocery store. And – there's a certain amount you have to order in it in order to get free shipping. However, the produce is phenomenal. Yeah. Sometimes better than what you would get in the store. Right. And there are different uh, companies for that, definitely. Um, so, yeah. And then ask for help in exchange of, you know, maybe a home-cooked meal or something. If you have a friend that can help you with maybe you need some something moved around, like a, some five-gallon buckets or containers or maybe you need help with weeding or maybe you just need help getting the supplies for your um, for your garden because they might be too heavy or not able for you to, to move, maneuver around. Say, hey, you know, can you help me? I'm, I'm going to go buy these things at the store. Can you help me get them set up? And then, and then, you know, once I have this delicious produce, I will cook you or make you a salad or whatever or share the produce with you. And, and if you're on the receiving end of that, just be nice, offer them the help and don't expect uh, something in return right just pass it on right but i think that if you are if you are asking to help it's nice to offer something in return well yes maybe you maybe you have a crafty you know you're crafty and you want to make them a little craft or draw them a pretty flower picture for their fridge whatever um 
But what I'm saying yeah. is if we help somebody, we shouldn't automatically think, well, if I help them, I'm going to get something in return. No, not at but all. But that's the way some people think. Right. And that's not right. But most people I know when they ask for help, they do offer some sort of um, compensation, compensation, yeah. but not necessarily monetary, but just something that like, hey, I can do this. I mean, I have friends who will um, offer, you know, like I said, artsy stuff, crafty mm-hmm. stuff, whatever. Well, something that you can uh, probably have to take care of yourself first and then you can work in your neighbor's yard is those pesky Japanese beetles that are flying around. It's summer, my friends, and they are wreaking havoc on not only your garden, but everybody's in the neighborhood. Yeah, if you're looking to successfully control beetles without damaging the environment, look no further than Beetle Gone from Phylum Bioproducts. Derived from a naturally occurring bacteria, Beetle Gone is the only organic solution that successfully controls beetle invaders. Just mix the powder with water and spray on your plants. Once ingested, the targeted pest will stop feeding and dying since it's an organic BT product. You know it's a great choice to use on your fruits and veggies in addition to your ornaments. Your ornamental flowers and trees. Not only does Beetle Gone work, the best part about the product is it is safe to use around beneficial insects such as ladybugs, butterflies, and bees, and has zero water toxicity on your property and the environment. Beetle Gone from Phylum Bioproducts. Find out more at BeetleGone.com. Beetlegone.com. And when you purchase at Beetlegone.com, use coupon code GARDENTALK10 at checkout to save 10% on your order at Beetlegone.com. For more information, please visit the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com. 